Hey guys, just wanted to take a minute and thank you, the listener, for listening and proving you have a growth mindset. Our mission is to curate information from the top influencers around the world. Uh, We provide you with real actionable steps on how to improve in any area of your life, whether you're an entrepreneur, a C-suite executive, or just starting your journey of self-development. The Professional Development Podcast is all about growth, and you know if you're not growing, then you're dying. If you enjoy the content, please help us uh, by liking, sharing, and telling a friend about the content. We enjoy getting together, and uh, here we go. Hey guys, what is up? Dan here. Uh, Today is April 13th, 2021, episode 33. Uh, and we have just Brad today, <laughs> Brad and I. Just, I think your song was a little short there, buddy. What do you mean? I don't mind just the tip. Hey, just for a second. <laughs> Once you get the tip in, the rest is so easy. So get this intro out of the way and you'll yeah. be all set. So uh, obviously no Matt, no Bobby. Today, um, they are traveling. I guess they have a volleyball tournament. Something about chasing sand crabs and some some chicks. I so think. yeah, hopefully they pick up the W and... Uh, Maybe a couple couple chicks and see what happens. So um, we don't have the structure we would normally have, uh, but what's going on with you, Brad? Anything? Oh, man, nothing. Still swamped at work. Uh, actually, I'm loving the topic that we have today. Uh, it should be a really good one. Uh, I have a lot that I can talk about it for personal experiences as well as stuff that you know I've curated from from other influencers in the industry. So I'm excited. What about you, man? So you did a little bit of golfing this weekend? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did something super bougie, and uh, I did. joined a club. A country club? I, I call it a club because I don't want to say country yeah. club. Um, but I, I really did it to just buy my time back because if I want to play golf competitively still, like, you, you can't do that at a public course and have four kids and do baseball and hockey. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, because now my son does baseball and hockey on the weekends, um, and now he has base like he has a baseball game during the week, and my daughter does competitive dance. So it's like, how do I get to still accomplish my goals? But they're number one, so it's like, how do I be part of it? Was, it was an investment of your time, right? Basically. So now yeah. I can play around in you know two and a half, three hours versus six hours that it would take me at a public course on the weekend. So I really did it for the time. I'm not like walking around there. It, dude, he, it's He's crazy. not bougie, but like every 10 <laughs> minutes on Instagram story, it's like <laughs> at the country club. That's not true. Oh, look, my, was, my, my pal and me at the club. Here. No, yeah. um, but people look at me like I am like, like who what's the fu- this guy doing? Yeah, here? who the fuck is this guy? Like he's got a beard. Hey, that's, that's good like, though. His shirt's untucked. <laughs> like it's fucking ridiculous. That mustard stain. Like I'm trying still, to hang out. I with, saw that yesterday. I'm trying to hang out with the employees, to be honest with you, because they just like I like, hey, what's up, dude? Yeah. Like, like Mr. Griner. I'm like, please fucking Mr. call me Dan. <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. It's crazy. Anyway, so that's the bougie thing I've done. But yeah, dude, uh, kids are kids are running with hockey, baseball, dance. Like life's getting crazy. So yeah. uh, I'm also super excited for this topic today. Um, because really, I missed last week, and last week uh, it was what you don't hate, you tolerate. Yeah, the which, Malcolm X quote. That's what we was it Malcolm week. X. Yeah, that's okay. what. That's what. Because Ed Milet talks about that a lot too, and I didn't. I did listen to the pod, and I don't know if you guys dove into Ed too much. Uh, but we touched on him a little bit. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. I mean, you he, could dive into Ed on pretty much any topic. Right. Talk yeah. About. For sure. But um, so this is kind of a parlay on that. A little bit different twist, and it's uh, really setting a standard. Are holding yourself to a standard, um, and so I actually did what Brad usually does, and I I was like, well, what the fuck is a standard? Like, how do you define that? And so Google says, a standard is a level that you decide that something should be equal to or greater than. To set a standard for something means to decide what the standard is going to be. Um, as a leader, it's your job to set a standard for an entire group. Um, standards are things you set for yourself by no longer putting up with less than what you are capable of doing. So that is, I thought that was a great definition. Yeah, it was. And it was actually, so as you know, I always do that. I always Google, you know, what it, what are we talking about this week? Um, I, I had a different one, which was perform an activity at a level that other people have to try to achieve. So, you know, it's, that's when you, on surface level, you're like, oh, well, everybody tries to, to, to be better. But I think the biggest thing about setting a standard is society's standard is actually average. Like, yeah, and and what I think we're probably going to dive into here in the next 30 minutes is 
how do you go from that average of what society says this is acceptable to the next level? Right. Well, what you're saying is the that society sets the standard yes. at average. Exactly. Right? Or yeah. really below average. Yeah. Because yeah. then you have people around you saying like, well, why are you trying to get better? Yeah, exactly. Why are you losing weight? Like, why are you putting yourself through that? Why are you working so many fucking hours? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, so... Interesting. Uh, do you have any quotes for this week? I know that I, I... Do we usually open with that shit? We usually open, but hey, you know. Hey, without Matt. New week. Know, no glue. So. Yeah. so yeah, I do have a quote. This one's from uh, Jeff Bezos, one of the richest people in the world. So I figured he's probably got a pretty good standard. So uh, leaders have relentlessly high standards. Many people may think these standards are unreasonably high. So to me, uh, that kind of speaks to what I just said about, you know, mediocrity of, you know, society has an average standard. Obviously, he put himself in a position that his standards are, are way, way higher than anybody else's. Yeah, and I have a couple of quotes, um, and I want to speak to that one, but I want to say the quote that is around leadership that I have. You, one have, of a, the quotes. you have a couple because, because your standards are higher than mine? <laughs> yeah, dude. I always bring, you have to bring three. Yeah. Um, the quality of a leader is reflected in the standards they set for themselves. And so there was no person related to that quote, but I thought that was really, really solid, and especially in relation to what yeah. Jeff had said. Um our buddy Jeff. Yeah. We might be able First to First name on. basis now. Um, I emailed him once, by the way. He didn't email me back. Did it bounce back? Or no, it went so? through. Hey. Jeff at Amazon.com. For everybody out there. Um, anyways, the quality of a leader is reflected in the standards they set for themselves. And to talk toward your quote as well is, you know, I think that <clears throat> like if you look at a Steve Jobs and you watch the movie that they did on him or whatever, uh, he would freak out on people because like one little... One thing it, the wrong. color was yeah. fucking not right, or you know what I mean? It's like do it again, do it again. And I'm a believer, I, Justin Bieber, whatever. He he, so he was he has this YouTube series, and he was like really fucking hard on himself over like one line. He was like, no, we're fucking doing it again, we're doing it again until like he had he's hit the standard that he set for himself. And I think that uh, and and not to dive too much further because I want to talk about this later, but. As a leader, you set the standard for everybody else. You create the culture for everybody else. But on the flip side, they're going to start holding you to that standard. And as soon as you break that standard, they're going to lose respect for you. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think this episode will probably turn into a lot of, of leadership talk because I think in, in order to be a really good leader, you have, to have, you have to have high standards. If your standards are low, the people around you aren't going to work to, to, to their to fullest potential. To yeah, they're just not going to. Yeah, so, and then... Uh, I'll skip this quote because it's they're kind of the same. But sometimes the issue is simply their ceiling is your floor. Yeah, I love that one actually because I always talk about you never want to paint your your goals. You know what? Some people might think a hundred thousand dollars is a lot, or some people might think a million dollars is a lot, or it might be ten million. You know, you got to put that that really high because I think you probably see this a lot with with your work. For me, it's just myself really as a, as the sales guy at, at my business. But when you're selling people, I'm sure you have standards of what, you know, hey, we, we want to sell 30% of this. So then, oh, shit, they came in at 25% this month. Yeah. So then what do you do? You're like, okay, well, that was good. Maybe 25% should be our goal. And then you, you, you lower it to 25. And then what do they hit the next month? 20. Right. So it's like, don't paint, make that wall as high as you can possibly make it. Yeah, and you got to hold them to it. Like yeah, there, exactly. there has to be fucking consequences you have for yourself and for your team or whatever um, whenever you don't hit those particular standards. But, uh, you know, with this, sometimes the issue is simply that their ceiling is your floor. Back to when you said, hey, society sets it at average. And, you know, the, the thing I think about <clears throat> and what's interesting is, you know, you grow up in this this uh, whatever society throws at you, right? So, like, if you're born into an area that's poverty stricken, typically, um, if you look at statistics or whatever, you you'll end up in yeah. the same boat, right? Because your standard is kind of what everybody around you is. And um, I was trying to wonder, or I was thinking about, like, how do how do people that come from like that poverty background? How, where do they start setting their standards higher than what they're used to? Um, because those always end up becoming the higher performers, I think. I didn't have shit around me when I was growing up. But I do remember, um, and I still do this, when I go to Florida and I, or I go to the lake or whatever, I, I look around and I see all these fucking yachts, right? Yeah. And I always talk, you know, I want a boat, right? Um, and I'm like, if all these motherfuckers can get these yachts, why can't I get that yacht? Right? Exactly. And so 
but the people that I'm with, I'll 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 say that out loud, and they'll be like, oh, pff, no, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's no, and so that is my floor, uh, uh, and that's their ceiling. Exactly. You know, and to to just jump right into it, uh, so I actually have exactly the same thing wrote down: is people identify as someone or something, and they don't change because that's who they are. So, like you said, they're born into a bad situation. They're like, oh well, the world's against me. This is this is just what I what I am. I, I can't get out of this. And then there's that that one percent of that group that that says, no, fuck that. I'm gonna be something better. I see these things, and there's nothing separating me from getting that. And and the same thing applies to people who are who are born into you know very fortunate situations. You know they they. That's probably why they say, you know, the rich get richer is because, you know, if if you are are with somebody that's already a higher perform a high performer, obviously the standards are 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 at a high level. You know, like that's why you see, you know, Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk are both in the NHL, two brothers from right here in St. Louis, because their dad played fucking professional hockey. Yeah. That's why Tiger Woods kids but didn't probably Keith, gonna be fucking badass. Didn't Keith Kachuk say like one of them got lucky to get in the NHL? Oh, I'm sure Brady, right? It, 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 whenever He's he got goon. drafted, he was kind of like, Are they still, I'm happy they're for him, killing, but, you yeah. know, but yeah, no, they're, they, and even they his, da- even their daughter, I mean, she, I think maybe went to the Olympics or, oh, really? I think I could be wrong. Somebody will have to fact check that on me. Interesting. Yeah, but I also think there's a flip side to that um, where you can get comfortable and then you become part of, um, so there was a bell curve where it's 20% of the people push forward and they grow. 60% of the people just kind of fall in the middle and the top of that bell curve, right? And then 20% of the people go backwards. And so even people, you know, so you have people that are born in, you know, it's just easy to say poverty, but yeah. you could have any background really. And they say, hey, I want more. I see other people with more. If they can do it, why can't I do it? And they go after and get it. Well, there's people that are born on the other side in the country club world or whatever yeah. that they look around, oh, life's easy. You know, money's just there, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so those are the 20% that start to digress. And um, I actually know somebody whose parents are, are very wealthy um, and they're doing a generational trust. Okay. Uh, because the kids just decided not to do anything. Oh, and boy. And they are, um, so what, basically what happens is it's, the trust skips them um, and it goes straight to the grandkids. Jeez. That'll go, <laughs> that'll go over real well. Yeah. I don't, I but don't, hey, you know, like, uh, you know, obviously if anybody around us knows that I, I was born into a, a fortunate situation and I mean, I flat out told my parents, like, I don't want any of your fucking money. Because right. I'm just here to fucking do my own thing. Like I'm, I bust my ass every single day to to be, I guess, that 16 percent or whatever that that's gonna go somewhere further. And uh, so yeah, I do agree though. I, I mean, I've seen people that you know are also in that situation that end up just fucking wasting their life away because life is you know e- technically easy. Yeah, and, and so you know, I love my dad, right? But you know, my dad, <laughs> I, he works at a factory at night, right? Yeah. And um. One of the things about him is he definitely has a victim mindset a lot of the times. And so when my grandparents died, he was like, oh, I should have inherited this or, you know, because long story short, some of the siblings got more than the others, yeah. right? And so, you know. Somebody it, always it, gets hurt. And so for me, true. I was like, dude, who fucking cares? Like that money wasn't yours to begin with. You didn't work for it. Yeah. Like my goal is to have more money or success or whatever of what I want than I could ever inherit because I'm not going to rely on that shit. And yeah, you're you shouldn't be on dependent that. on that. Like, oh, when, when my parents die, I'm going to come into some money. Like, no, fuck yeah. that, dude. Like, <laughs> exactly. The, like, whatever money I'm going to inherit, I hope is nothing compared to what I already have built. Yeah, so it's just interesting to see the different mindsets. And then um, in terms of standard, and you, you kind of touched on this, but I was, uh, I wanted to talk to this this article that I read by on Inc. Um, and there was an article and um, this guy, he was an author and he, he was writing a book and all of his friends were like, Hey, he would send the manuscript and they were like, Hey, your book's great, man. And he was, he thought he felt really good about it. He's like, I'm ready to go. Well, he started working with Ryan holiday, which okay. I know you're reading one of his books or you yeah, just, yeah, read I just it. finished that one. Um, and Ryan holiday, uh, after he was extremely satisfied with the manuscript, he'd send it to Ryan. Ryan would send it back every time, like over and over again. All like, these edits. dude, you can do this 10 times better. You can do this 10 times better. And 
you know, Ryan was the person that held him to a standard. Um, and I, I think that's so awesome because at the very end of the article, he was like, I read my old manuscripts and I cringe. Yeah, exactly. I bet, right? You know, because I didn't even realize that there was a higher standard than what everybody else that I was comfortable with sharing the manuscript, what they were saying. Because I think a lot of people who don't have such high standards, they'll just say, oh yeah, dude, that, that shit's yeah. good. Yeah, yes. hey, whatever, man. I, yeah. And, and a lot of that is just, you know, participation trophy people nowadays. Like people are like so scared to say like, dude, this sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of like actually giving that honest feedback to, you know, be better. And a guy like Ryan Holiday that's wrote so many successful books is somebody that can, you know, be brutally honest and you're actually going to accept that criticism and know that it's real. Yeah. And so to that, you know, and I had the question written down, but we kind of already answered it is, should you have people in your life that hold you personally to a higher standard? And I absolutely think that you should. Uh, and that's really your mentors, right? Those are the people that hold you accountable when you fuck up, not the people that are like, oh man, dude, I know you're going through a hard time. I get it. You'll get past it. You know, like, no, dude, you didn't fucking do the work and yeah, and, and I you're think, fucking up. <laughs> and know? I think that's a, actually a, a great situation to, you know, evaluate who your who your mentor is because if if your mentor isn't being straight up with you and telling you, hey, dude, you fucking, you're a dumbass. Like, why'd you do this? You fucked it up. Like, make it right or whatever. If they're not telling you that, they are not a mentor. They're not somebody that you want in your circle to guide you with with those standards that they're setting for for you and to hold you to them. Right, and look at where those people are compared to it, maybe where you're at or maybe that you're on the same level, but look at where those people are compared to the people that are just like, oh no, dude, it's okay. It'll yeah. you'll, This will blow by, right? And so I had read one time and I always thought this was a... Uh, a cool like litmus test or whatever um, I, I, where it's the pe how many people do you have in your life that push you outside your comfort zone? So how many friends do you have that if they would come to your house, you would be like, oh shit, I got to straighten up. I got to yeah, make, yeah. you know what I mean? Those are the people that you push yourself to a higher yeah. standard to be around. And I know that for a fact, the mentor that I have, I'm like, like he was like, hey, can you drive this me? This house better be spotless. Can you pick me up? Yeah. I'm like, dude, I didn't, my, car better be, <laughs> my car better be fucking <laughs> Gotta legit. go Just rent like, something. Because his car, you know what I mean? Like yeah. his shit is always right. And so it pushes me to always be right whenever I'm around him with all my shit and be, you know, some not embarrassed, but like know that, hey. No, you should be embarrassed. I, yeah. You should I, be. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that was okay. Yeah, but. no, yeah. Um, if that was the right word, but yeah, you know what I mean? Over, over my situation, because that pushes me or, or pulls me up, I guess you could say, um, whenever I'm around him versus there's some people I'm around that's like, yeah, dude, just fucking swing by. Like, you know, I got my Gatorade bottles on the floor, the fucking yeah, yeah. forerunner, yeah. you know? <laughs> so my battery's dead again. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> like I wouldn't even call him cause it's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> like how the fuck do you let your battery die? Exactly. Dude? And, and since he's coming on our podcast next week, uh, I do have some stuff from Andy Frisella. So everybody out there that's listening, next week we're headed to First Forum headquarters to record a podcast with Andy Frisella. So make sure you tune into that one. And what I have is, it's it's the little things that, and, and this may be a little bit more towards last week, but it's still the same thing. Like you have to have a standard for yourself. Like when you go into the bathroom and there's fucking piss on the toilet, do you just fucking look at the piss and think somebody else is going to fucking do that? Or do you just fucking get the toilet paper, fucking wipe that shit up and throw it in the toilet? You know, is is there something that at work that happened that you let slide? Like say, say Matt didn't make his sales calls this week and you're like, hey dude, like what the fuck? Or do you just fucking say... Uh, he'll he'll get it next week. He had a lot going on, you know. Like right. he had but, to pack his bikini for. This but you got to weekend. hold yourself to that same shit, right? You do, like, no, hey, you I do. didn't do my yeah. fucking party. You do, you know. But, but, but you got to be able to call yourself out. You do, and that's all about accountability. So it's like you have to self audit yourself. You have to you have to audit the people you're around. But it, if you start to let those things slide, it just starts to snowball. And then at the end of the day, you're in a situation where. They think it's acceptable to be have something late for work. They think it's acceptable to to leave something a mess. And I'll be straight up. I talked about this last week. I I'm what I used to be one of the most unorganized people in the world. And fortunately, um, I I have an employee that actually set that standard for me. That's like you know, dude, like we got to get this place looking a little bit nicer. I put in the work. He puts in way more work than me still. But it's nice to have that. That you know, I, I feel like. Maybe it's being in this group where it's like we're trying to develop ourselves. Um, to to be a good leader, you have to be able to 
develop leaders underneath you. And I think that's what we're doing at our our work is, you know, I, I've developed a leader that he oversees the other kid now. And it, it's actually a really nice situation. Yeah. And you probably love that guy because he is somebody that that levels you up, even though he works for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's rare. Yeah, it is rare. And I, but I also, it, I, there is a thin line in that situation. Like, I, I don't know how you tread it at work with Matt as as being business partners and also being friends to me that would be that would be extremely difficult um i think my situation was slight, slightly different when i was racing we were on the road together i mean like dude we work seven days a week essentially you know like we might have had a sunday off right so we we were like more of a a family atmosphere as opposed to friends i would say which maybe separates that but i think that's that's a really hard situation because a lot of times in families, it's hard for somebody to say, you Yeah, know, but, you know, a business is a living and breathing thing too. And so, um, I always open up, or we always open up, I guess you should say, is like, hey, as friends, I love you, man, but yeah. here, here's what the fuck is going on. This is the, this is what pays this the is, fucking bills, and, so. And saying it from a business perspective, like, in the best interest of the business, this is what the fuck's going on, you know, outside of the friendship, like, Still my boy, like yeah. we're still friends, all that shit. So no homo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so but to your point, like what is right, what is wrong? The piss on the toilet seat, the putting your shopping cart back. Yeah. Um, and so I was listening to on Andy Frisella too, and now it's like when I see something, if I see um if I'm at the store and I pick up something and I walk down, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna fucking get this. I used to just put that motherfucker back wherever yeah. I was standing, but now I'm like... Because it's not your problem, right? Right, but yeah. now I'm like, no, I got to walk this fucking thing. No matter how many aisles it is, I'll walk across the whole fucking store to put it back exactly where it goes. And that's a standard that you kind of set for yourself. And I think that you can have standards in different areas of life. Like, I know people, uh, sp- like on a spouse or a mate or a girlfriend, whatever, or a boyfriend, um, where it's like... And this one sucks for me. They got to be a certain height, you know. Yeah. Like I'm five fucking seven. Like I, that ain't gonna cut I, you know, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not up to standard for a lot of a lot of people out there. Um, you know, but just like, are they employed? Like, what's their financial? Like, people have standards in that that regard. People have standards with professional development, with health, wellness, weight, with sports or competition. Like, there's always a standard there. And if you're not meeting that standard, you know, you probably already have standards. You're just not. You know, you didn't put those together. They're just there. Um, and you're getting pissed off or disgusted with yourself, you know, when you violate that standard, I guess you could say. Um, if you're feeling anxiety or shitty about the effort that you put in, um, then that's your standard, right? Like yeah. you have a minimum standard. A standard is a minimum that you accept of yourself or of people around you in certain situations. And so, um, you know, Ben Newman talks about this. and Another, another future guest. Yeah, I mean... We're, just, we're building boy. them up. We're building we are. them up. Um, standard over feelings. What does that mean? You know, what does that mean to you? Uh, he talks about it, and he, basically, it's like, hey, not allowing feelings to dictate dictate how you show up. So sometimes you wake up, you sometimes you feel like shit, and you're like, hey, I don't want to fucking, you know, I always working out so easy to bring up with this shit, and I never <laughs> work out. Um, but you know, I don't feel like working out today. Well, your standard is that you're gonna fucking work out. So yeah. even though you don't feel like doing it, you still do it. I don't feel like walking that fucking yogurt across the fucking store and putting it back where it goes, but, but I'm, I'm gonna going do to. it because I have a standard. There's a piece of trash I walked by. I looked at it. As soon as I looked at it, I know that I have ownership of that fucking trash. Walking <laughs> it's away, it's like you is, threw it on the ground. Exactly. Yeah. And so now I have to fucking pick it up and I have to bring it to a trash can every fucking time I see a piece of trash on the ground. Every time I, you know, a lot of people have this standard, hopefully, with holding doors for people. Just like little shit like that. Those are all standards that we have that we hold ourselves to. And I I actually, I have something very similar to that that Tony Robbins actually says. And it's always get your must done, not your shoulds. So what that means is like, I, I should go work out. No, you make that a must. It should be, I must work out. Change the word, right? You just change the word. Because once you start to, once you have that that list of things that you must get done during the day, you're, you're going to do them, not the shoulds. It's like, oh, I should get up earlier. And that's something that uh, in the book I just finished up by Dr. Jason Selk, it was to basically- Another guess. Another guess <laughs> is when you when you wake up in the morning, No, nobody's a fucking morning person. Nobody. Right. A guy like David Goggins, a guy like Jocko Willink. Like these guys- they're, they don't get 
up early in the morning because they want to. They're doing they're just it. just so, fucking fired up. To yeah, just it. because they're, they have a standard for themselves. Like, I'm going to get up at fucking four in the morning and go run fucking 10 miles because that's a must to them. Right. So it's just what you make as your as your your non negotiables for the day that you need to get done. That it's just no different than than your standards. It's what 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 is my wall or your floor or your ceiling, and then how can I exceed that? And right. I th- like I said earlier though, I think your high performers, a guy like Connor McDavid, you know Wayne Gretzky, these guys, they, there's a standard to be drafted number one overall, right? And there's a standard to be a Hall of Famer. Or Tom Brady. Like, look at this. He was he was drafted what 199th. Okay. Right. He could have sat there and said, Oh, well, I'm a fucking six fucking round pick. Right. No, he didn't do that. He set his own fucking standards of what he wanted to accomplish in life. And he obviously fucking went out there and fucking slayed it. And right. now, like, does he seem cockier now than he did five years ago? Yeah, but fucking do it, man. You're not cocky if you have a fucking... If you back that shit yeah, up, if you right. fucking got two... We talked about that. If you cocky, have two, cocky uh, and confidence, baby. Yeah, um, and then Tiger Woods. Like, he had written on the wall 18 majors, like, when he was a kid. That was his standard he set. And so he just got hurt. Uh, Rory McIlroy, other golfer. Jordan Spieth did it with the Masters. He wrote a letter to Augusta, said that, you know, he was, like, fucking eight years old. Like, I'm gonna oh, really? Come, yeah, he's like, I'm going to fucking win the Masters when I get, you know... Yeah. Uh, eligible. And they're like, and they okay, fu- kid. yeah, okay. <laughs> but I think they actually did keep the letter, and they, like they they showed it after he did win the fucking Masters. So. I wonder how many letters they have. Let, like, oh, after the that, after that, it's like <laughs> no, fucking. No, I mean, there's probably oh, like yeah, thousands yeah. of letters. We from have people. to save these in case one <laughs> yeah. of these kids does do it. They have a fucking file cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but to back to my story with Tiger, Rory went over there, and you know, Tiger's won um, like eighty two golf tournaments yeah right so 82 trophies right plus he's won some major junior events he's won everything obviously yeah and there were only 15 trophies in the trophy room which is his living room and Rory was like well where are all the other ones he's like well those are just the majors i don't know where the other ones are the other ones don't count i don't even fucking care about that you know yeah like but that's cool to me i love i dude i fucking love that like that's like a swagger thing to me like he just fucking like lays his dick out on the fucking table and is like, <laughs> yeah, I won 82, but these are the only 18 that well, fucking matter. Like, yeah, like he doesn't even give a shit about him. And that, and Rory even said like, that was the only thing I could think about driving home is they those meant nothing to him. They were like practice, but yeah. he still got victories. Exactly. You know? And so I think that's a standard thing, right? For sure. That's 100% a standard. And so those are those are the highest performers or the, the people that set the highest standards. And I mean, you see it all the time. You can call it glass ceilings or whatever, you know. Um, like, you know, if there's a female president down the road, I never, I don't think that there's ever a ceiling. I think that the only limitations or ceilings, uh, that are out there are, are imposed on themselves. And I think that, you know, that glass ceiling will be broken at some point. Um, and I hope it is, but, uh, I, I hate when they, I, I actually hate the word glass ceilings. I hate and it I know too. that that might not be glass uh, house, fan favorite anything like that, that i don't like because so. i i just feel like you can do anything that you want to do if you set the standard and you and you go get after it and do the work you put in those you know consistent efforts with with the right intention every single day and you, you can get there yeah and that's what sure. separates those guys like david goggins and you know they're fucking not even one percent club like they're so fucking far on that scale yeah and, and personally and I fucking hate telling this story because it sounds so like Is it gonna be bougie? bougie? <laughs> Maybe I am fucking bougie. You are <laughs> fucking new. But I car. bought my new house, right? Yeah. Whenever new I car, go- new house, and a country club all in fucking like six months. <laughs> I'm not bougie. Why are you telling people in my business? Look at that. <laughs> you are. I'm, I'm just trying fucking, to tell you a story. I'm compiling it for everybody so they know. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can depreciate any car over six thousand pounds. Yeah. Uh, six thousand one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so not, not a house or a country club. So my, I, I agree with my wife that we need a bigger house. We had a bunch of kids. We lived in a 960 square foot house with four kids. Yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. It was crazy. You it guys was, upgraded. It was like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like the grandparents <laughs> yeah. fucking like sleeping in each other's beds. <laughs> uh, one bathroom, all that. So you know, it was time to get some more space, and we moved into this uh, this newer house. It's just decent, you know. Uh, to to most people, they're looking at it like, oh my God, like, wow, what a nice house. And they're like congratulating me. And I'm actually... You know that's not your forever home. I'm, I, yeah. I hate saying this, but it was almost like I didn't even want to post the picture of the fucking house. Yeah. Because that's not my standard. Like, I feel like I should be 
next level from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it sounds really bad to say, but that's just who I am. I can't fucking help that, that I have this high standard for myself. Um, and so like, I'll just keep going until, until I fucking can get there, I guess. So that's it, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, that's all I got on standard, um, uh, holding yourself to a standard. So I, I think it's all good stuff. Um, Hey guys though, before we get out of here, um, oh yeah. Just make sure, you know, we have we have some really big guests coming up in the next actually the next two weeks. We have three really solid guests that are that are big names. We got Andy Frisella, we got Ben Newman, Dr. Jason Selk. So it, if you're liking this stuff, you know, give it a share on Instagram, Facebook, all the socials, Twitter, you know where we're at. Uh, I mean, we're getting good feedback from everybody that gives us feedback, and we want to hear more feedback. For it, sure. Because we, we love doing this and we do it as friends. We started as a book club, all that shit, right? But at the same time, we we want to make sure that we're impacting somebody. And if we can impact one person, that's that's the goal. But if we can impact a bunch of people from you guys helping out with sharing and and just telling somebody that maybe the like our what what's our top podcast, the minimum wage, minimum, minimum wage skill set. equals minimum skill set, which no, Dan got same thing. Dan got in a, a fight on Instagram with with somebody this yeah, week on def- defending you know minimum wage. But yeah. regardless, like you know. We want to do more of that shit. We just want to make sure that our shit's on point, I guess. So yeah, and um, and with what we're going into the next two weeks here, uh, I mean, obviously we're not we're not fakes, guys. We're we're rolling into some pretty serious guests that are worth quite a bit of money. So, you know, give us a share, give us a like, give us that feedback. And you got? Uh, did we get a question? Right we now? do. We do have a an inquiry from the fans this week. So the question that we had this week was, how does being an entrepreneur affect your family life? So being that we're the only two that have kids, this is probably uh, the perfect question for us. Yeah. What, would, what would Bobby and Matt say? I don't know. They better get on that though. They're gonna be they're gonna hey, go to their kids' baseball what? games and it's gonna be like, <laughs> Oh my god, your grandpa's fuck. here. He come to every game. Dude, I have a fucking story. You know the guy too. Do I'll I? tell you after oh, okay. his name. But like uh so my dad who's like, you know, he's whatever, he's just out there. We pulled up when I was a kid to pick uh, up this kid from the for our baseball game. He's like, "Oh, hey, how you doing? Uh, you live with your grandparents?" <laughs> the kid's That's like, "Fucking funny. No, it's my fucking dad." <laughs> like, God how damn, embarrassing. Dad. Um, so, how does entrepreneurship affect family life? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll be super can. It, it can be tough. Yeah. Um, I work a lot. I put. You know, our goals, or my goals, I guess, <laughs> our goals. Uh, I put my goals, you know, with my business um, up there priority wise. I always put the kids first, um, for sure. I've been in everything for the kids. So that's that's something I'm proud of. Yeah. That's a standard that I have, I guess. And that's something that we're lucky to do. Yeah. I, I, we have a little bit more freedom in that regard, but, um, you know, the business is, like I said before, a living, breathing, yeah, it's its own entity. And so shit pops up. You know, every day is fucking different. There's problems that come up. And sometimes, yeah, you have to cancel dinner and yeah. you have to fucking work through it. And, you know, so those, I guess that's some of the downfalls. Um, but on the flip side, like, hey, we want to go on a fucking trip or we want to, um, you know. Just whatever, really. Our car fucking broke down. So I can just fucking buy a new car. Like yeah. shit like that. That's That's where we don't have to like worry about some things and the kids have a, a pretty good life. And I try to try to monitor that to a degree because I don't want to overdo it. Um, because I've seen, like we yeah. talked about on this podcast, I've seen the flip side of the people who, who don't work. And I think your parents did a good job, Brad, because you work your ass off, you know, even though they did really well. So I, I think, you know, for me, there's, there's pros and cons and hopefully that answers kind of both sides. Yeah. For me, uh, I, I probably tread the line the worst. Like I'm horrible at that that balance, which I think is a bunch of bullshit. Anyways, I don't I don't think there is a work life balance between, you know, owning a business and and being with your family all the time. And uh, I think there was a <laughs> there was a period period of our our family life where um, my wife would actually get pretty upset with me on things. And I think you know I finally got across to her, you know, hey, you know. If, if these are the things you want and and this is the lifestyle you want to live, this is just how we're going to have to roll with it for, you know, yeah. the next, you know, next five to 10 years. And then we'll, we'll get to that point to where, you know, the kids are in high school or whatever. And you just, 
you don't have a worry in the world. And and also we're we're also fortunate that both our wives stay at home and take care of the kids. So that's something that that I'm proud of that uh, you know my wife doesn't have to go out and and work 40 hours a week just to send our kids to daycare. So right. uh I, I don't think there's a balance. I think at the end of the day there's like situations come up that absolutely fucking suck, but uh I think it's all going to be worth it. Yeah, and, and just to speak to what you said, you know, sometimes you're super thankful and sometimes it's like... Yeah, don't get me wrong. There's days yeah. where I'm like, fuck, I wish I was just fucking punching a clock. <laughs> right. But, you know, uh, those those days make the good days that much better. Right. But, yeah, so that's that's what I got for an answer on that. If that helped anybody out there, uh, let us know. Share it up. Yeah, um, I guess that's all we got for today. Shorter podcast, probably. I don't know how much time we're in, but... Um, yeah, new cool little studio. We're in here with Rich, who has a platinum album from DJ. <laughs> don't cut that. Yeah, don't cut that DJ out. DJ Khaled. It's, yeah, look at that. Another one. Platinum album. So anybody out there that's needing some audio work done, hit up our our engineer here. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And we will see you on a big episode next week. See you later, guys.